How you doing? Last time we were here, we went over how to build a primitive style bed using archaic materials so you can sleep under the stars. Now, depending on the conditions, you might need a shelter over yourself, or you certainly might need a fire to keep yourself warm for the night. And I'm going to go over the basics on how to build a uh, simple campfire, and I'm also going to go over the principles and concepts needed uh, so that you am, will be able to adapt this to your changing situations. Um, let's see, what I've done here is I've adapted the, the ground. I've, I've taken away the, uh, the vegetable, vegetable material from the ground so as not to start a fire. And we're rangers, we don't destroy nature, we preserve it. So here's what I'm doing. I have bared ground for the fire. At the same time, I'm also removing any dry material from the area between me and the fire. Because I might be sleeping on dry vegetable material as padding. I don't want this fire coming back and making me into an ex-ranger. So so that's that's how it's gonna be. Um, principles. I'm gonna start with the, the parts, the components of the fire that we're gonna build. Um, I classify this as firewood. This is what we wanna our objective is get this burning. Once we get it burning, the firewood, the fire is done. Done. Um, it's a little bit heavy. I can't just like throw a spark on it or a match on it. It's gonna have some preparation. Um, I'm using kindling that is basically split lumber, right? In this case, but you can alternatively use uh, sticks that are gathered from the forest floor. Equally as good. Unless it rained last night, then you have to think about wet wood. I can say that a piece of wood like this has a ignition temperature. Let's say for the sake of argument it's 400 degrees. That'll get this burning. And when it burns, its combustion temperature is around, let's say, 500 degrees. That's, you know, typifies it. This has a higher ignition temperature. Let's say it requires 500 degrees to get it burning. And once it gets burning, what is that? Up to 600 degrees or so. Um, that's the concept. And at the same time, we need to rig up something that'll get this burning too. That's the next step. I'm making a fuzz stick. Now this is a piece of kindling or other wood that I'm shaving so that it has little pieces like feathers coming off of it. Uh, this helps bridge the gap between smoldering tinder and the kindling. Because as we mentioned, a piece of wood has a certain ignition temperature. Uh, this will have a lower ignition temperature than the regular kindling. So I can catch a flame to this, then transfer it to my, to my, tindle, um, to my kindling teepee and get that going. All works in theory. We'll see how it works. Um, alternatively, if you have a nice dry pine cone, that can work very well as well. Okay, I'm going to use my kindling to build a sort of teepee. Now, it's normally something you have to be careful balancing, but since the ground is soft, I can sort of sink these pieces of wood into the ground to give it a stable foundation. Once we get it burning, that won't last long, of course. And uh, I'm gonna smaller one over there. Let's see what's going on. Um, that's a good start. And around this, I'm gonna build careful, I'm going to build a log cabin. This is kind of like the history of settlement Oops. in North America. Catch my drift. Okay, so once I get this built up, what's happening in both cases is that we have ventilation from the sides 
but we're also providing fuel above the flame. Both are critical components. Now, in order to get this thing started, I'll take a couple of logs off the fire temporarily. There we go. So my objective will be to get this kindling going from below. Right. In my belt pouch, I have not only my fire and steel kit, but a couple of pieces of cordage, which I can unravel into natural fiber. This is jute. And this is um, hemp. And I'm unmaking this cordage. It's uh, amusing because we're also doing a cordage making class. And basically what I'm doing is reducing cordage into the natural fibers that they're made from. This will be made into a, a nest of natural fibers. It could be anything. I'm just using what I have available. Uh, you may have some dry leaves or grass or straw. Um, it's like a bird's nest. In fact, some people use bird nests. But a bird wants to be on top of the bird's nest. Or an egg it wants to be on top of the bird's nest. A baby fire, so to speak, wants to be in this position. The nest is on top of the fire because bird fire burns upwards and it wants to consume that, that uh, fuel. If you have it on top, it can't access the fuel and won't burn. Okay, so what I'm going to do is place this, this piece of char cloth on top of the bird nest. This is one way people like to do it. You can, uh, if you can see what I'm doing, I'm bringing out my flint and steel. Now, this is a good piece. I've got another piece I want to use. Let's see this. Flint and steel. I'm using the sharp edge here. You can see the sharp edge. That wants to move against the steel, like that. There's really no word in English to describe it. We say strike, but it doesn't bring up the right image. It's sort of a chop, but it's not a chop. What I like to do is start a distance away, then bring myself in closer and closer until I'm just skating over the surface. You can see some sparks coming off it. I want to caution you not to do this in someone's face because they'll get some sparks and pieces of flint in their eyes. We don't want that. So one way of doing this is to throw sparks directly onto that char cloth. A little tricky. It's not my favorite technique because the sparks sort of fly in random patterns and it takes a while before you get a, char a spark to fall directly onto this char cloth. Another one that people will do, they'll try to put the steel right on top of the char cloth and try to, and I think I, think I caught something. It's not how I normally do it. Let's start over. Now, instead of this technique, what I prefer personally is to put my flint in the left hand, the sharp edge up, and I will strike against the flint with the steel. Same principle, but what's happening is I know every time I, I touch it, there's going to be sharp, uh, sparks in this area every time. So that is a place I want to put my char cloth. I know if I throw a spark onto that char cloth, there's a good one. It's already cut. Now I have some time to get, get things arranged. Once I get it in here, I 
I burnt my fingers, but I have a fire. It's on the candle right now. I dropped the uh, the uh, tinder bundle in the fireplace, so it won't start any fires that I can't control. But now the the the, the candle is holding the fire for me, so I have some chance a chance to get it going. And I'm touching it to the uh, the fuzz stick that I made, and attempting to get that going. Once it gets going, it's going to go under here, and hopefully, it will get my uh, my teepee going. Okay, that's pretty comfortable there. Running pretty good. Piece of cedar. I'm even going to save my fire on my candle just so I can. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I'm just get pick, pick it up on this other piece of tinder. patience at this stage to get the kingdom set up. By the way, I'm in uh, my backyard. I'm practicing fundamental tasks. I, I don't recommend doing this for the first time 500 miles away from uh, from civilization, because that's not where you want to make mistakes the first couple of times. So if you have a chance to practice fire making in your backyard, do it later on. Once you get it down, you can challenge yourself. In the old days, the candle was the goal. Once you got your candle lit inside your house, you could use it to start a fire, Light your cigar, whatever, whatever you need to do. And you can see it's certain to kindle here. It's somewhat wet wood. But then again, it's a the poor craftsman that blames his tools, right? Start putting the firewood back into the... So there we have a campfire. What I will want to do is set up my extra logs nearby because I'm going to sleep next to this fire as it burns down to a uh, uh, glowing embers. I'll, pat, I'll, sleep, uh, I'll go to sleep. And I might wake up kind of cold as the fire goes out. Put another log on the fire. That's where expression comes from. However, the last, last hour of uh, night before the dawn, it's the west, the eastern sky lightens and turns gray. The mist settles over the land. The birds start to sing. A dew falls on everything, including your firewood. So it's a good idea to keep one piece of firewood under something protected from the dew. So in the last hour before dawn, you have some dry wood to cool on your fire. Just an idea, good advice. Happy camping. <laughs>